Hello my dear students I hope you all are really really doing great student once again I welcome you on this amazing platform of physics wala english channel students if I talk about today's lecture today it's simply a practice session and in this lecture we will practice few questions related to thermochemistry and then we'll do few questions on thermodynamics so today's lecture it's all about practice we'll start with thermochemistry we'll solve 10 to 12 questions of thermochemistry we'll touch each and every sub topics related to thermochemistry and then we'll switch to thermodynamics so without wasting any further time let's start our discussion now it's time to start our practice session today and the first question which is there on the screen is among the following reaction for which delta h equals to delta e student we have to find in which of the following case delta h that is change in enthalpy and change in internal energy is same change in enthalpy is nothing but qp heat supplied at constant pressure whereas change in internal energy is nothing but heat supplied at constant volume qv now we have a relation delta h is equals to delta u or delta e plus delta of ngrt now we have to check delta h equals to delta e and if delta h has to be equals to delta e means delta ng has to be equals to zero right student now basically in these options we need to check in which case delta ng is zero if we look at this one 1 1 2 minus 1 so delta ng is equals to 1 here if i look at this particular option b 2 minus 1 plus 1 so delta ng equals to 0 third one three gaseous molecule five gaseous molecule delta ng here is 2 plus 3 minus 3 it's 2 whereas if i look at option d delta ng equals to 1 product side 1 minus 1 plus 1 so it's minus 1 in which case you find delta ng equals to 0 in option b so student for this reaction change in enthalpy will be equals to change in internal energy b is the right answer i hope you understood this particular question please do copy it Let's move ahead. Moving to the next question which we have on the screen and the question says, study the following thermochemical equations. I'm having conversion of A to B and in this process enthalpy changes 100 kilocalorie. A is getting converted to B and enthalpy changes 100 kilocalorie. Perfect. Now B is converted to C, enthalpy change is minus 80 kilocalorie. The correct order of enthalpy of formation of A, B and C are. Student, here A is getting converted to B and in this process energy absorbed is 100 kilocalorie. Can I say this particular reaction is an endothermic reaction? or endothermic conversion absorption of energy delta h is positive delta h greater than zero endothermic delta h less than zero exothermic energy is released right now let's write this process i'm having a getting converted to b and energy is absorbed so can i say b will have more energy let us suppose this one this is the energy level of A or enth enthalpy of formation of A. Now, if it will absorb 100 kilocalorie, then I will have the formation of B. So, this is the enthalpy of formation of B. Now, student, B is getting converted to C. And in this process, B getting converted to C. And in this process, energy released equals to minus 80. Still can I say B will have more energy because as B is getting converted to C, energy is getting released. So can I say C will have less energy as compared to B? 
right so now as this b is getting converted to c energy is released and energy released is 80 kilocalorie so can i say this is the energy level of c now if i need to compare the enthalpy of formation of a b c can i say the correct order is going to be for a it will be minimum then it will be for c and for b it will be maximum so b will have maximum enthalpy of formations then i will have c and then i will have a b c a now let's have a look at the options which we have b max then c and then a so b is the right answer student i hope you understood this particular question also please do copy it and the question says the standard enthalpy of formation of co2 gas co gas and h2o gas are minus 393.5 minus 110.5 and minus 241.8 kilojoule per mole respectively the standard enthalpy change for this reaction student before moving ahead first of all let us talk about what do we mean by the term delta hf naught some people write it like this when i let's write it like this only it's nothing but standard enthalpy of formation of a compound standard standard enthalpy of formation of compound of compound right student if i define this term it can be simply defined as the enthalpy change in a reaction when one mole of a compound is formed from its constituent element and these constituent element should be there in their standard state or the more stable state of aggregation am i clear let's try to understand it student if i talk about this delta f h not for co2 gas delta f h not for co2 gas its enthalpy of formation of co2 gas what are the constituent elements carbon and oxygen now i will define it i need to form one mole of co2 gas so i will write product first of all co2 gas the constituent elements are carbon and oxygen now what's the more stable state of carbon graphite form so i will write c graphite right now constituent element oxygen in case of oxygen what is the most stable state it's nothing but oxygen gas only diatomic oxygen right plus o2 gas and it will give me co2 gas this is how we write enthalpy of formation of or standard enthalpy of formation of any compound student now one thing what do you mean by the term standard itself in thermodynamics and thermochemistry standard condition means one bar pressure and all the temperature is not that specific but you can take 298 kelvin temperature one bar pressure and 298 kelvin temperature now at standard condition enthalpy of formation of any elements in their standard state is taken as zero so if i talk about enthalpy of formation of c graphite at standard condition it is going to be zero for oxygen gas it is going to be zero now one more thing let's define this term enthalpy of reaction or enthalpy change in the reaction enthalpy change in the reaction is delta hr not let's write it like this equals to enthalpy of form sigma summation of enthalpy of formation of product formation of product product minus enthalpy of sigma enthalpy of formation of enthalpy of formation of of reactant 
right okay now student we have a given reaction that is co2 gas reacting with h2 gas is giving me co gas plus h2o gas let's write this reaction co2 gas plus h2 gas is giving me co gas plus h2o gas right this is our required reaction and for this reaction i need to calculate enthalpy change in the reaction that is enthalpy of formation of product minus enthalpy of formation of reactant right okay so can i write delta is equals to enthalpy of formation of delta f h naught of co gas co gas plus delta f h naught of H2O gas, right? Minus delta F H naught for CO2 gas minus delta F H naught for H2 gas. What is will be delta F H naught for H2 gas? Enthalpy of form or standard enthalpy of formation of hydrogen. It's there in their standard state. It is going to be zero. It, this value will be zero. Now they have given these three data, right? They have given us for CO gas and H2O gas. It's nothing but minus one one zero point five and minus two forty one point eight. One one zero and two forty one point eight. So minus one one zero point five. Plus of minus how much? 241.8. 241.8. This is the enthalpy of formation of product. Minus enthalpy of formation of reactant. H2 it's already 0. And for CO2 it's minus 393.5. Yes. Minus 393.5. So minus and minus it's plus. So 393.5 minus. 241.8, 241 and 110, it's nothing but 351 and 352.3, 352.3, it's close to 41.2 kilojoule per mole. Am I clear student? Now let's have a look at the options. 41.2 kilojoule per mole energy is absorbed in this process because delta rh is greater than zero the process is endothermic or exothermic endothermic am i clear please do copy this particular question and if you have any doubt please do mention in the comment box whether you understood it or not Student, if I talk about standard enthalpy of formation of certain elements in their standard state, or if I talk about the standard state of few elements for carbon, it's the graphite form. For oxygen, it's always O2 gas. For hydrogen, it's H2 gas. For fluorine, it's fluorine gas. For chlorine, it's chlorine gas. But for bromine, it's bromine liquid. For iodine, the standard state is considered to be I2 solid. Am I clear? Okay. Let's move ahead. Delta HF naught for NF3 is minus 113 kilojoule per mole. Bond energy of NF is 273.5 kilojoule per mole. The bond energy of N2 and F2, if their magnitudes are in the ratio of 6 is to 1 respectively. Okay. Let's write this question first of all and write the uh, let's write the reaction involved i need to write i need to form nf3 right so let, can i write the reaction like this half n2 plus 3 by 2 f2 will give me nf3 this is how we define enthalpy of formation of nf3 one mole I need to form this compound. From it, constituent elements. Constituent elements are nitrogen and fluorine. And that should be there in the 
standard state now the enthalpy of formation of this nf3 is nothing but the enthalpy of this reaction because enthalpy of reaction is enthalpy of formation of nf3 minus enthalpy of formation of n2 minus enthalpy of formation of f2 but for these elements the enthalpy of formation is going to be zero right okay now let's write the structural form of this one can i write it like this half n double triply bonded n plus 3 by 2 f bonded to f is giving me n f f and f how many nf bonds are there three nf bonds let me write it in a better way this is not the correct structure of this nf3 right n f f f lone pair although this lone pair is not that significant here but still let's write it now student now they have given bond energy i'm going to give you one more formula enthalpy of a reaction enthalpy of a reaction is always equals to or enthalpy change in a reaction is equals to sigma bond energy of reactant bond energy of reactant minus bond energy of bond energy of products right sigma bond energy of reactant minus bond energy of product now let's talk about the reactants here the reactants given are nitrogen and fluorine and their bond energy are in the ratio of 6 is to 1 let's suppose for for fluorine fluorine let us suppose the bond energy is x so for nitrogen the bond energy will be n2 the bond energy is going to be 6x right now so i am having the reaction half n2 so half into 6x right student this is the bond energy of the reactant nitrogen plus 3 by 2 into bond energy of fluorine and bond energy of fluorine is x this is the bond energy of the reactant fluorine now this is bond energy of entire reactant minus bond energy of product in the product side i am having nf and the bond energy of nf is 273.5 right 273.5 kilojoule per mole okay how many nf bonds are there three so 3 into 273.5 right it's nothing but enthalpy of reaction and enthalpy of reaction is how much minus 113 kilojoule per mole so it's minus 113.113 kilojoule per mole only equals to half into 6x plus 3 by 2 into x minus 3 into 273.5 okay if it will come this side then i will have let me check the bond energy of nf3 it's 273.5 only perfect now so minus 113 plus 3 into 273.5 that's equals to 3x plus 1.5x right Four, that's 4.5x 4.5x equals to how much 3 into 273 3 into 270 is nothing but 810 810 and 3 819 and this one 1. 1.5 so 820.5 this is close to 820.5 and this is how much minus 113 minus 113 so total how much you are getting 706 706.5 706 and that's equals to 4.5x so what's the value of x x equals to 706.5 upon 
right student okay let me write it like this so 70 65 upon 45 right okay now if i divide it how much we are getting uh one then we'll have this 35 35 means how much close to let's have a look at the options through options only we can see the value of x we will get will be close to i think 160 let's have a look 70 it's 25 right 25 and 6 so 256 five times 150 15 now we will have some uh, 25 once again and close to 6 so 155 156 the value of x is close to 156 now if i look at the option the closer value this one 157.22 this is the bond energy of fluorine and bond energy of nitrogen is 943 so the correct answer is option c students i hope you understood this particular question also students the question which we have on the screen says the standard enthalpy of formation of nh3 gas CuO solid and H2O liquids are minus 46, minus 155 and minus 285 kilojoule per mole respectively. The enthalpy change when 6.8 gram of NH3 is passed over cupric oxide. Okay, student, let's try to do this question. First, this ammonia gas is passed over cupric oxide. Okay, so student will have this. NH3 treated with CuO, right? And I will have the formation of N2 plus Cu solid plus H2O liquid, right? Now, if I talk about the balancing of this reaction, let's do the balancing also. 2 NH3 will give me. 2NS3 cupric. Yeah, so it's CO only. N2 plus here I will have how many hydrogen? 3 hydrogen. So 6 hydrogen. So 3 water molecule. If it's 3 water molecule, then 3 oxygen here. So I need to add 3 oxygen here and 3 copper solid here. Is this reaction balanced now? Yes. Now, if i talk about enthalpy of this reaction enthalpy change that equals to enthalpy of formation of nitrogen enthalpy delta hf naught of nitrogen let me write it like this only enthalpy of formation of nitrogen plus enthalpy of formation of delta hf naught of copper solid plus delta hf naught delta hf naught of h2o liquid right this is the summation of enthalpy of products it's three times here it's three times and here it's one times while writing these things we need to check the stoichiometric coefficient also and we need to multiply it by stoichiometric coefficient now minus two into enthalpy of formation of ammonia so 2 into delta hf naught of nh3 plus 3 into delta hf naught of cuo am i clear student this is our final formula now we need to substitute the data right delta hf naught of nitrogen zero copper solid stable state of aggregation zero so, in the product side only, we will have 3 into delta HF naught of H2O liquid. Delta H of this reaction is equals to 3 into delta HF naught, HF naught of water molecule, right? Minus 2 into delta HF naught, HF naught of NS3 plus 3 into delta hf naught of cuo solid right we need to 
write the state also. Now, for NS3, it's minus 46. For CO, it's minus 155. So, minus 46, minus 155 and minus 285. So, for S2, it's minus 285. So, 3 into minus 285. Minus 2 into 2 into 46. Plus 3 into how much? Minus 46, minus 155. 2 into minus 46. Minus 3 into minus 155. Right, student? So, how much you are getting? 280 into 3, 840. 840 and then this one is 5. So, 55 minus 855. Minus 855. Now, plus this one, minus of minus. All these things will go up in plus. So, it will be 92 plus of 465 465 and 90 it's 555 and to 557 right so it's minus 855 plus 557 right student so it's how much minus 855 and plus 555 it's minus 300 and minus 300 plus 2 minus 298 minus 298 closule closule now this is the enthalpy change when two moles of ammonia is reacting right when two moles of ammonia is reacting the enthalpy change is minus 298 kilojoule so when 6.8 gram ammonia means how many moles 6.8 upon 17 it's nothing but 0.4 so when 0.4 will react what will be the enthalpy change 298 upon 2 into 0 0.4 so it's 0.2 it's 59.6 right close rules let's have a look at the options 59.6 whether it's minus or plus it's minus. So, minus 59.6 kilojoule per mole. A is, is the correct answer. When 6.8 gram of NS3 will be passed over cupric oxide, the amount of energy released will be minus 59.6 kilojoule per mole. Right, student? First, we have calculated the enthalpy of this reaction. Enthalpy of reaction equals to su summation of enthalpy of products minus summation of enthalpy of reactant. Once we know the enthalpy of reaction, we'll see how many moles of ammonia is reacting. So, here, two moles of ammonia is reacting. And when two moles of ammonia is reacting, the enthalpy change is 298. So, when 0.4 mole of ammonia, 0.4 mole of ammonia will react, what will be the enthalpy change? Am I clear? Please do copy all these things. Next one. Student, let's do this question also. And this question is really, really important. Now, the enthalpy of combustion at 25 degrees centigrade for H2 gas, cyclohexene liquid and cyclohexene liquid are minus 241, minus 3920 and minus 3800 kilojoule per mole respectively. The enthalpy of hydrogenation of cyclohexene. Student, here we need to convert enthalpy of hydrogenation of cyclohexene means cyclohexene treated with hydrogen molecule and the product will be cyclohexene and enthalpy of hydrogenation of cyclohexene it's nothing but enthalpy change during the reaction when this one mole of cyclohexene is treated with sufficient amount of hydrogen to give us one mole of cyclohexene am i clear let's write the reactions now enthalpy of combustion of combustion at 25 degrees centigrade for h2 gas Student, if I talk about enthalpy of combustion for H2 gas, H2 gas, it will react with half O2 
gas and I will have the formation of H2O liquid. This is nothing but enthalpy of combustion of H2 gas or we can also say it as enthalpy of formation of H2O liquid, right? Because if I define enthalpy of formation of H2O liquid, the concerned reaction will be like this only. Right? Enthalpy of formation of H2O liquid minus enthalpy of formation of oxygen gas minus enthalpy of formation of hydrogen gas at standard condition this one will be zero. This one will also be zero. So enthalpy of combustion of hydrogen gas equals to enthalpy of formation of H2O liquid. Am I clear? This is also nothing but enthalpy of formation of H2O liquid or it is enthalpy of combustion of H2 gas. Now, enthalpy of combustion of cyclohexane. Let's write that also. Cyclohexane. So, it's C6H12. Treated with oxygen. Will have the formation of 6CO2. Completely burnt, right? Plus 12, 6H2O, right? How many oxygen? 12 and 6, 18. So, 9 oxygen. Energy change in this reaction is nothing but enthalpy of combustion of cyclohexene and it's given as minus 3920. The value data is also given. Right, student? Enthalpy of combustion of cyclohexene or enthalpy of combustion is simply defined as the amount of energy released when one mole of an organic compound is burnt completely in the presence of air or oxygen. So, what's the enthalpy change here? Minus 3920. And this enthalpy change of this reaction is also defined as enthalpy of combustion. Now, enthalpy of combustion of cyclohexene. Cyclohexene is C6H10. Plus oxygen will give me 6HCO2 plus now 5H2O. Right, student? Okay. So, how many oxygen? 12 and 517 by 2 12 and 517 so 17 by 2 oxygen here right student so 8.5 moles of oxygen here now i need to calculate the enthalpy of hydrogenation of cyclohexene let's write the currents let's write the concerned reaction that is the reaction of enthalpy of hydrogenation of cyclohexene so cyclohexene is C6H10 plus H2 will give me C6H12, right? We need to calculate the enthalpy change for this reaction. It's nothing but enthalpy of hydrogenation. And can I say enthalpy of hydrogenation of this particular compound reaction will be enthalpy of formation of C6H12 minus enthalpy of formation of reactant. That is enthalpy of formation of hydrogen minus enthalpy of formation of C6H10. Let's write that also. Enthalpy of hydrogenation or enthalpy of this reaction equals to enthalpy of formation of delta HF naught of C6H12 minus delta hf not hf not of c6 h10 plus delta hf not delta hf not of hydrogen right student okay but we don't know the delta hf not of c6 h12 and c6 h10 but we have our reaction like this can we do some algebraic or arithmetic manipulation here friends let's do one thing let's subtract 1 minus 2 1 minus 2 okay reaction 1 and reaction 2 so if i subtract reaction 1 and reaction 2 what we'll get 9o2 half o 8.5o2 it's half o2 this one this c6h10 will go that side so c6h12 plus half O2 will give me C6H10 C6H10 plus H2O 6H2O, 5H2O H2O What will be the enthalpy change for this reaction? 
enthalpy change for this reaction will be minus 120. Right, student? Now, if I write the enthalpy change for this reaction, can I write? It's nothing but enthalpy of formation of C6H10 plus enthalpy of formation of H2O minus enthalpy of formation of C6H12. A student, if I invoke this reaction, can I write it like this? C6H10 plus H2O will give me, can I write it like this? C6H10 plus H2O will give me C6H12 plus half O2, right? And for this reaction, the enthalpy change will be, it was minus 120, so it will be plus 120. I have inverted it, right? Reverse this reaction. Not inverted this. I have reversed this reaction. Close hole. Now, can I write delta HR for this reaction? It's nothing but enthalpy of formation of C6H12. Delta, delta HF naught of C6H12 minus delta HF naught of or plus delta hf naught of oxygen but it's nothing but zero so it's minus delta hf naught of reactant that's delta hf naught of c6h10 plus delta hf naught of h2o liquid right right student okay enthalpy of reaction we know that's 120 equals to this one we don't know okay let's keep it like this only but enthalpy of formation of water molecule we know. So let's keep it like this. Enthalpy of formation of C6H12 minus enthalpy of formation of enthalpy of formation of or standard enthalpy of formation of C6H10. And this side it's minus. So this side it will go as plus plus enthalpy of formation of water molecule. And it's how much minus 241. So minus 241. How much it's minus 121. This is the enthalpy of formation of C6H12 minus C6H10. So now this data we know. C6H12 minus C6H10. This value is minus 121. This value is 0. So what will be the enthalpy change for this reaction? minus 121 am i clear student so what will be the enthalpy of hydrogenation of cyclohexene it is going to be minus 121 do we have any option minus 121 first option itself so this question is really really important once again i request you all to please go through it thoroughly friends moving ahead the next question which we have on the screen is related to the concept of enthalpy of neutralization Enthalpy of neutralization. How do we define it? It's simply defined as the enthalpy change when one mole of a strong acid is treated with a one mole of or one equivalent of a strong base results in the formation of one equivalent of salt along with the formation of one equivalent or one mole of water. So when one mole of water is formed from one mole of H plus and one mole of OH minus, the enthalpy change in the reaction is nothing but enthalpy of neutralization. Am I clear? Student, but here in this particular question, the acid given is a weaker acid. So will one mole of acid dissociate and will it give me one mole of H plus? No. First, I need to provide ionization energy in case of weak acid. First, I need to ionize this acid. I need to liberate all the acidic hydrogen first of all. Right, student? Okay. H3PO3. PO3. Can I say it's nothing but a diprotic acid? Right? So, on ionization, it will give me HPO3. 2 minus plus 2 of H plus. So, how many moles of H plus is released here? 2 H plus. 2 moles of H plus. The energy required in this process is referred as enthalpy of ionization. Right? Okay. Now, the next reaction. Now, I am having 2 moles of H plus coming from this reaction. NaOH will react and it will dissociate as Na plus plus OH minus. Here we 
a strong base ionize itself completely we don't need to provide any energy the energy required or released is zero now these two H moles of H plus will react with two moles of OH minus and will give me what H2O two moles of water molecule right what's the energy since during this reaction for one mole it's minus 55.84 when one mole of H plus is reacting with one mole of NaOH HCl H plus NaOH OH minus the enthalpy change is minus 55.84 when two moles will react so minus 2 into 55.84 right student now students I'm having S3PO3 reacting with NaOH and the reaction will be simply like this can I write two moles of NaOH two moles of Na two moles of OH minus right now so can I write my given reaction like this H plus H plus will cancel out OH minus OH minus will cancel out two moles of Na plus it will combine with this one so I will have S3PO3 reacting with two moles of NaOH and it will give me Na2HPO3 plus two moles of water and enthalpy change in this reaction is enthalpy of new reaction or enthalpy of neutralization which will be equals to enthalpy of ionization plus minus of 2 into 55.84 so 2 into 55 it's 110 110 and it's one again once again 1.68 so 111.68 minus 11 1.68 right this is the enthalpy of this reaction and enthalpy of reaction is given that's minus 1 point minus 106.68 so this enthalpy of reaction equals to enthalpy of neutralization and it's given how much minus 106.68 so can i say minus 106.68 which is enthalpy of neutralization equals to enthalpy of ionization plus enthalpy of formation of water and that was how much Two moles of water is what is getting formed so minus 111.68 so what is the enthalpy of ionization here student enthalpy of ionization is 111.68 minus 106.68 it's close to 5 kilojoule per mole so for a weaker acid enthalpy of neutralization we have this formula equals to enthalpy of ionization ionization plus enthalpy of formation of one mole of water and enthalpy of formation of h2o liquid from one mole of h plus and one mole of oh minus and it's nothing but minus 55.8 sometime it's given as minus 57 so depending on data you need to check am i clear please do copy it and this particular question is also really really important enthalpy of neutralization equals to enthalpy of ionization plus of minus 55.84 for one mole but here it was a diprotic acid so i need to consider for two moles am i clear please do copy this students moving ahead the next question which we have on the screen says which of the following reaction represents bond energy of HCl bond energy of HCl basically it's nothing but the amount of energy required to break this HCl bond to hydrogen and chlorine which option is representing this one this one right so A is the correct answer student I hope you understood this particular question shall we move ahead let's move ahead the bond energies at 25 degree centigrade are cc single bond it's 346 ch single bond it's 413 hh it's 
437 and CC double bonded 611. From these data, calculate the value of delta H at 25 degree centigrade for this reaction. Once again, student here, we have to calculate enthalpy of hydrogenation of cyclohexene. It's nothing but cyclohexene, right? Treated with hydrogen molecule and is giving me cyclohexane. Hexane, right? Now, student, let's look at the structural formula of this compound. How many CC bonds are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. 5 single sigma CC bond, right? Student, if I talk about enthalpy of reaction, already we have discussed it. It's nothing but sigma bond energy of reactant. Reactant minus sigma, sigma bond energy of products right okay let's talk about the bond energy of reactants how many cc single bond so can i say here if i talk about this bond energy of reactant i am having five cc single bond so it's five into cc bond energy of cc single bond be of cc single bond right okay plus one cc double bond so bond energy of cc double bond right i hope you understood till here now how many ch h h every carbon is bonded to two hydrogens every carbon bonded to two hydrogen except these two carbon so how many carbons are bonded to two hydrogens one two three four Four carbons bonded to two hydrogens. So total we have eight CH bond from here and one and one. Total ten CH bond from here. So plus ten times bond energy of CH bonds. Am I clear, student? This is the bond energy of this cyclohexene. Now plus bond energy of hydrogen atoms. This is the bond energy of reactant we have reactant one we have written only for the reactant till yet now we need to talk about the bond energy of product right okay I'm in the product side i am having this one it's carbon bonded to two hydrogen so total how many ch bonds how many ch bonds six carbon here each carbon bonded to two hydrogens, so total of 12 CH bonds. Student, if I talk about the bond energy of product, B of product, it will be equals to 6 bond times bond energy of energy of CC sigma bond. Sigma bond, right? Plus 12 times bond energy of CH sigma bond. Right? Now, enthalpy of reaction. Enthalpy of reaction. It was bond, summation of bond energy of reactant. That is 5 times bond energy of CC sigma bond. 5 times bond energy of BE of CC sigma bond plus 10 times bond energy of CH sigma bond plus one time bond energy of bond energy of cc double bond right plus bond energy of hh bond this is the bond energy of reactant minus bond energy of product six times bond energy of cc sigma bond minus plus 12 times bond energy of ch sigma bond sigma bond right five times bond energy of cc sigma bond six times bond energy of six six cc sigma bond so it's minus bond energy of cc sigma bond right okay plus 10 times bond energy of ch sigma bond 
and 12 times bond energy of ch sigma bond so it's minus 2 times bond energy of ch sigma bond bond energy of cc double bond as it is no change plus bond energy of cc double bond plus bond energy of hh double bond hh six single bond sorry now what's the bond energy of cc sigma bond they have given 346 so minus 346 right student minus bond energy of ch sigma bond 413 two times so minus 2 into 413 right plus bond energy of cc double bond cc double bond how much 611 and hs it's 437 611 plus 437 Six eleven plus four thirty seven. It's nothing but ten forty eight from here. Ten forty eight from here. It's eight twenty six. Eight twenty six and three hundred. How much? Eleven twenty six. Eleven twenty six. Thirty two seventy two. It's eleven seventy two plus six hundred. How much? Six. 11 plus 6 11 plus 437 it's nothing but 1048 1048 so it's nothing but minus 124 closule per mole let's have a look at the options minus 124 closule per mole b is the correct answer student i hope you understood this particular question also please do copy it Students, moving ahead, the next question which we have on the screen says, the enthalpy of hydrogenation of benzene is minus 51 kilocalorie per mole. Student, if I talk about this enthalpy of hydrogenation of benzene, it's nothing but like this. I'm having benzene and this benzene is treated with 3 moles of hydrogen and I have, I'm getting this one, this one, cyclohexane. And the actual amount of energy released in this process is how much? Delta H for this process is minus 51 kilocalorie per mole. Perfect. If the enthalpy of hydrogenation of 1,4 cyclohexadiene and cyclohexene is minus 58 kilocalorie per mole and minus 29 kilocalorie per mole respectively, what is the resonance energy of benzene? Okay. Student, we need to simply focus on the cyclohexene because in case of cyclohexene, I am having one pi bond, right? Now, the enthalpy of hydrogenation of this cyclohexene is how much? How much delta H for this reaction is minus 29 kilocalorie per mole, right? Student, so in order to break one pi bond, the amount of energy required is minus 29 kilocalorie per mole. So in order to break three pi bonds, what will be the theoretical amount of energy required? In order to break three pi bonds, if I have to break three pi bonds, one pi bond, the amount of energy required was 29. So in order to break this three pi bond, into cyclohexane the amount of energy required will be minus 29 into 3 so can i say this minus 87 kilocalorie is the theoretical energy theoretical heat of hydrogenation it's theoretical and it's nothing but minus 87 kilocalorie per mole but what is the actual amount of energy released when this benzene is converted to cyclohexane it's minus 51 so del what is delta H actual? Delta H actual is minus 51 kilocalorie per mole. Now student, we have a term called resonance energy and this resonance energy is nothing but delta H actual minus delta H theoretical. Theoretical. What's delta H actual? 51 right minus 51 and what's delta is theoretical minus 
87 so minus of minus plus 87 so what's the resonance energy of benzene student 36 kilocalorie kilocalorie per mole do we have any option 36 kilocalorie per mole so b is the right answer student i hope you understood this particular question please do copy it students moving ahead the next question which we have on the screen and which we need to solve is from the following thermochemical equations find out the bond dissociation enthalpy of ch3h bond okay ch3h bond so student if i write the desired reaction can i write it like this ch3h will dissociate as ch3 gas plus h gas right CH3H will dissociate as CH3 gas plus H gas. Now, student, we need, need to get this desired reactions from these reactions. If I do some arithmetic operations on these reactions, we can definitely get this reaction. So, shall we do? Shall we start? Let's start, student. This is, let's suppose, reaction number 1. It's reaction number 2. Reaction number 3. Reaction number 4 and student here it's I2 is getting converted to I gas. It's not H, I2 will not get converted to hydrogen. So it's I2 is getting converted to, to I gas. Now student let's do one thing. Let's add equation 1, 2 and 3. If I'll add these three equations and if I'll subtract the fourth one from these three Will I get this desired reaction? Let's see. 1, 2, 3 is added. So, basically, I will have CS3I, CS3I getting cancelled. Right? Then, HI, HI getting cancelled. Student, I am subtracting fourth from these three reactions. So, I am having two iodine, iodine solid, iodine gas, iodine gas. And two iodine gas getting cancelled. I2. I2 getting cancelled and here it has to be in gas state itself. It's there in the gas state only. Then only it will get cancelled. So this one is getting cancelled. So what's remaining? CH4, CH3 and H. This is my desired reaction. If any reaction is added or subtracted, the delta H also gets added or subtracted. It's nothing but in accordance with Hess law. So can I say for these reactions or for this reaction delta H of this reaction is going to be delta H1 plus delta H2 plus delta H3 minus delta H4. So it's 54 plus 29, 83, 83 and 79 it's 162, 162 minus 51 it's 111 here students it's 111 not 11 point it's 111.8 kilocalorie per mole so student option d is the correct answer i hope you understood this particular question please do copy it it's a simple application of hess law right let's move ahead Estimate the average SF bond energy in SF6, the value of standard enthalpy of formation of SF6 gas, SF gas, S gas and F gas are minus 1100, 275 and 80 kilojoule per mole. Okay, student, this SF6 will dissociate as sulfur gas plus 6 fluorine, 6 F, right? Now, student okay the average bond energy we have to calculate in case of this sf6 let's do it can we calculate delta h of this reaction it's nothing but enthalpy of formation of s gas plus 6 into enthalpy of formation of this fluorine gas minus enthalpy of formation of this sf6 and it's given here how much for S gas, it's 275, 275 plus 6 into 80. That's for fluorine gas. Right? Minus of minus 1100. 
right student and how much you are getting it's 275 plus 480 275 and 480 is how much 480 and 75 555 and 755 plus 1100 right this much okay so it's nothing but 11 1855 and if student if i write it's nothing but it delta h of the reaction is also equals to bond energy of reactant minus bond energy of product right and if i write this structure as can i write it like this s f f f f and f how many sf bonds are there six sf bonds right so we need to talk about average sf bond energy so can i say six times bond energy of sf is equals to delta h of this reaction and that is 1855 so what is the average bond energy of sf molecule the average bond energy of sf molecule is 1855 divided by 6 it's close to 309 309.17 kilojoule per mole right student i hope you understood this particular question also so students that's all about thermochemistry now, students as promised in the previous class in now we are going to discuss few questions related to the concept of thermodynamics so let's start our discussion on the problems related to thermodynamics the first question which is there on the screen and the question says in a diagrams one to four the variation of volume with change in pressure is shown perfect all we are having in all the cases we are having pv diagram right okay a, a gas is taken along the path a b c d the change in internal energy of the gas student as we go through these diagrams can i say the thermodynamic process which we are doing is first it's a cyclic process right cyclic process and i had told you earlier also in a cyclic process the net change in any state function is always equals to or summation of state function is always equals to zero am i clear student now this internal energy is a state function so cyclic integral or net summation of internal energy in a closed loop is always going to be zero so what will be the change in internal energy in all the case here as I'm moving from A to B, B to C, C to D and D to A, the net change in internal energy is going to be zero. Net change is going to be zero, zero and zero, right? In all the cyclic cases, if I'm having a cyclic process, in all the cyclic process, net change in internal energy is always zero. Am I clear? Shall we move ahead? Let's move ahead. So what's the answer, student? Zero in all the cases. Option D. Shall we move ahead? let's move ahead in the cyclic process shown in the pv diagram the magnitude of work done student we have discussed it this also in the previous class on a pv diagram the net magnitude of work done is nothing but area under the curve so can i say the net magnitude of work done is basically area under this pv diagram area under this pv diagram so can you tell me what's the net magnitude of work done can i say it's nothing but pi upon 4 into this length into this length right area of the circle this length is going to be v2 minus v1 whereas this length is p2 minus p1 so it's pi by 4 into v2 minus v1 into p2 minus p1 am i clear student so it is going to be pi by 4 p2 minus p1 into v2 minus v1 pi by 4 d1 into d2 here d1 d2 magnitude is going to be same because it's a perfect circle right student so c is the correct answer i hope this particular question is also clear the net magnitude of work done on a pv diagram is nothing but area under the curve area under the curve okay let's move ahead 
sample of an ideal gas is expanded from 1 meter cube to 3 meter cube in a reversible process for which p equals to kv square with the value of k as 6 bar per meter 6 what is the work done by the gas okay it's an expansion process so it's a work done by the system let's first of all talk about this process it's following equation p equals to kv square right so can i write it like this p into v to the power minus 2 equals to k so it's a reversible polytropic process reversible polytropic process and what's the general equation of a reversible polytropic process pv to the power x equals to k so what's the value of x student here in this equation the value of x is minus 2 if we compare it right now what is the magnitude of work done in a reversible polytropic process w mod equals to p2 v2 minus p1 v1 upon x minus 1 right student am i clear now do we know p2 we don't know do we know p1 not at all but we know v1 and v2 at the same time we have this equation p equals to kv square so from here can i write this p1 equals to k into v1 square right now what's the value of k 6 and what's the value of v1 1 so can i say it's nothing but 6 into 1 square so it is 6 bar what's the value of p2 it is nothing but k into v2 square so can i say it's nothing but 6 into 3 square so can i say it's nothing but 54 bar now can i calculate the magnitude of work it's nothing but p2 into v2 minus p1 into v1 upon x minus 1 p2 54 into v2 v2 is how much 3 minus p1 how much p1 is 6 into v11 upon x minus 1 what's the value of x minus 2 minus 2 minus 1 so it's minus 3 now 54 into 3 162 right student minus 6 so 54 into 3 it's 162 minus 6 156 upon minus 3 so it's nothing but minus 52 bar into meter cube now 1 bar is equals to 1 into 10 raised to the power 5 newton per meter square what's the magnitude of work minus 52 into bar that is 10 raised to the power 5 newton per meter square into meter cube so it's basically in terms of joule can i write it like this now in terms of kilojoule if i want to write can i write minus 52 double zero kilojoules if i simply write magnitude it's 5200 kilojoules this much amount of work is done by the system am i clear let's have a look at the options 5200 kilojoules this is the work done by the system we don't need to consider sign already they have given work done by the gas it is going to be negative only work done by the system work done by the system right student okay let us move ahead the next question which we need to do is a given mass of gas expanded reversibly from state a to state b by three paths that is one two and three as shown in the figure perfect if w1 w2 and w3 respectively with the work done by the gas along their th paths then we need to compare the magnitude of work student simple one concept is there work is a work is a path function path function right larger the area under the curve 
more is the amount of work so if i talk about the path a the area under the curve is this much this is the magnitude of w1 it's w1 student if i talk about the magnitude of work done along path b it's nothing but this much now which shaded area is more one or two so can i say w2 will be greater than w1 now student if i talk about the work done along the path 3 it's going to be this much entire this area this particular area this entire area shaded region and it's nothing but w3 so can i say w3 is greater than w2 more is the shaded area under this particular curve as we move from path a, 3 am i clear so can we say w3 greater than w2 and w2 greater than w1 so can we compare w3 greater than w2 greater than w1 larger the area under the curve more is the magnitude of work done work is a path function if we talk about internal energy change u1 u2 u3 all these things will be same only but if it's a work if it's heat then it's a path function larger the area covered larger the area of the shaded region more is the magnitude of work am i clear please do copy it student let's move to the next question and the next question which is there on the screen says 10 mole of an ideal gas expands isothermally and reversibly from a pressure of 10 atmosphere to 1 atmosphere at 300 kelvin so what's the initial pressure p1 equals to 10 atm what is p2 it is going to be 1 atm perfect what is the temperature temperature equals to 300 kelvin now what is the largest mass which can be lifted through a height of 100 meter using this much amount of energy what's the maximum amount of mass which we can lift through a height of 100 meter right okay so let's first of all calculate work and here we need to calculate the work done in the case of reversible isothermal process what's the formula of work work is equals to minus 2.303 nrt log v2 by v1 here we v2 v1 not given p1 and p2 are given so we can write it's nothing but minus 2.303 n r into t log of p1 by p2 now what's the initial pressure 10 atmosphere so p1 is 10 p2 is 1 10 mole it's given r value we know temperature how much 300 kelvin let's put the data so the magnitude of work w equals to minus 2.303 into 25 upon 3 right the value of r into 10 into 300 n n r t log of p1 upon p2 that's 10 upon 1 log 10 is nothing but 1 so can we calculate the magnitude of work it's nothing but 100 100 into 10 thousand thousand into 25 25 thousand so minus it's nothing but minus 2.303 into 25 into 10 raised to the power 3 joules 10 raised to the power 3 joules this is the magnitude of work now using this much amount of energy we need to lift a mass through a height of 100 meter now as this mass is lifted through a height of 100 meter what's the change in energy it's nothing but the change in potential energy so can i say student magnitude of this work is equals to change in potential energy and change in potential energy is nothing but mgh okay and what's the magnitude here minus 2.303 into 25 into 10 raised to the power 3 joules that has to be equals to mass let's suppose the mass lifted is m acceleration due to gravity is 10 into 
h is 100 meter so it's 10 raised to the power 3 10 raised to the power 3 getting cancelled the mass which can be lifted is 25 into 2 50 and 0.3 approx 57 58 approx 58 kg 58.55 kg so b is the right answer student am i clear please do copy it first we have to calculate the work and the thermodynamic process which we are following here it's nothing but reversible isothermal process here it's a reversible isothermal expansion work done is going to be negative it's work done by the system pressure is decreasing right if pressure is decreasing means the piston is moving up it's a case of expansion if it's an expansion case it is work done by the system and in a reversible process the work done by the system is 2.303 nrt log v2 by v1 or 2.303 nrt log p1 by p2 am i clear please do compete students moving ahead the next question which we need to discuss is there on the screen and the question says two moles of zinc is dissolved in hcl at 25 degrees centigrade the work done in open vessel is student it's just a case like this one i'm having zn here basically zn is treated with hcl and i will have the reaction like this zn cl2 plus h2 gas liberated right one mole of zinc is liberating one mole of this h2 gas open container case open container case constant pressure case constant pressure case means it's a isobaric case and what's the work done in the isobaric process w equals to either minus p into delta v or that's also equals to delta ng ng into rt right one mole of zinc is giving me one mole of hydrogen gas so if i am going to take two moles of zinc it will react with four moles of hcl will give me two zncl2 plus two h2 so what's delta ng here delta ng is nothing but 2 right now we have delta ng equals to 2 what's rt it's minus delta ng rt right so delta ng is 2 r the value of r is 8.30 or 25 by 3 better take it as 8.314 or 25 by 3 into temperature and what's the temperature 293 298 kelvin 25 degrees centigrade so i can closely take it around 100 or 99 100 into 2 200 close to 5000 so somewhat less than 5000 means some close to minus 5 kilojoule do we have any option close to minus 5 kilojoule yes this one minus 4.955 kilojoule so b is the right answer student so i always suggest you take the value of r as 25 by 3 because in any exam you won't have that much time and the options given won't be so close to each other right so you can do these approximations in order to save your time am i clear please do copy it students moving ahead the next question which we have on the screen and the question is equal moles of helium hydrogen co2 gas and so3 gases are expanded adiabatically and reversibly from the same initial state to the same final volume they are not talking about the final pressure okay the magnitude of work done is maximum for student let's do this particular question or i am giving you 30 seconds please read this question once again so that you can understand it in a better way now student first it's a case of reversible reversible adiabatic adiabatic expansion so can i say it is going to follow this equation pv to the power gamma equals to k now if it's following pv to the power gamma equals to k can we say we will have p1 v1 to the power gamma equals to p2 into v2 to the power gamma now the next data which they have given is 
the initial state of all these gases is same so for hydrogen for helium first of all the initial pressure let's suppose is p1 the volume is v1 and now let's assume it is going to a volume v2 pressure is unknown p2 pressure is unknown volume is v2 now for hydrogen gas the initial pressure is p1 the volume is v1 the final volume is once again v2 only so final volume is same here also even for co2 gas the final volume initial pressure is p1 volume is v1 and the final volume is v2 only if i talk about so3 gas once again the initial state is p1 v1 and the final volume is v2 we don't know final pressure in each case can we calculate yes we can easily calculate student can I apply this equation P1 into V1 to the power gamma equals to P2 into V2 to the power gamma? Right? Now student, if I talk about helium gas, helium, it's a monoatomic gas. So what's the value of gamma? Cp upon Cv. Right? Now, student, if I talk about this Cp value, it's 5 by 2 a. Right? If I talk about CV value, it's 3 by 2 a. So, what's the value of CP by CV? It's 5 by 3. 1.6. 6, right? Now, student, so can I talk about the final pressure P2 upon P1 equals to V2 by V1, right? Sorry. It's nothing but V1 upon V2 v1 upon v2 to the power 1.66 right now okay so can i calculate p2 from here p2 is nothing but p1 into v1 upon v2 to the power 1.66 okay perfect now it was there for helium gas student similarly for hydrogen gas can i write the same expression because once again we don't know the final pressure but we know the initial pressure is same final volume is same initial volume is same so can i write for hydrogen gas final pressure of hydrogen gas is equals to p1 into v1 upon v2 to the power gamma and what's the value of v gamma for hydrogen gas diatomic gas 5 by 2 or 7 by 2 or so it's 7 by 5 1.4 right okay now let's have a look at these two data first of all v1 upon v2 is v1 or v2 which one is larger can i say v it's the expansion case so v2 is greater than v1 so can i say v1 upon v2 less than one right smaller numerator smaller denominator larger so fraction is going to be less than one now, if the fraction is less than 1 and if I increase the power, can I say the magnitude, the value of fraction will further reduce, right? 0.5 to the power 1 and 0.5 to the power 2. Here, the value is 0.25. So, can I say the, on increasing the value of this power for a given fraction, the net magnitude decreases? So, can I say P for h2 will be more as compared to p for he because here the power is more now can i say this value of gamma is in the order it's maximum for a monoatomic gas then for a diatomic gas h2 even for co2 it is going to be almost same only diatomic or polyatomic but linear so h2 and co2 is going to be same and it is going to be minimum for SO3 gas. Now, smaller the value of gamma, value of gamma larger the final pressure. The final pressure. So, can I say if I talk about the final pressure order? P of SO3 will be larger, then we will have P of H2 equals to P of CO2 
and then we'll have minimum for p of h e now we know initial pressure condition we know final pressure condition at least we know the relative order we know the final volume also now can we plot the graph yes we can easily do that let's plot it shall i plot it here itself let me plot p versus v state 1 it's the final state right student the final volume is going to be same for all the gases right this is the final volume condition but will the pre final pressure be same no the pressure order we have derived just now the pressure order is p of so3 is max okay so p of so3 is going to be max it will be like this this is for so3 gas then it will be for co2 and h2 gas and it minimum for he gas this is p1 v1 it's nothing but p2 v2 for so3 p2 v2 for co2 and p2 v2 for he now you need to comment on the magnitude of work magnitude of work simply depends on it simply depends on area under the curve can i say in this particular case in case of so3 area under the curve is max so in which case the work done will be max in case of so3 this question is moving to the next question which we have on the screen and the question says an ideal monoatomic gas initially at 300 kelvin expands adiabatically into vacuum to double its volume the final temperature of the gas is okay this question is also really really good one just now we have done this right it's the adiabatic expansion adiabatic expansion and adiabatic expansion in vacuum expansion in vacuum so can you comment on p external can i say this p external is going to be zero here students am i clear now if p external is zero can i say work equals to zero because p external is zero so work is minus p external into dv work is going to be zero now adiabatic process so what is delta q equals to zero once again can we apply flot if we apply flot it says delta u equals to delta q plus w delta q is zero w is zero so can i say delta u is going to be zero and if it's delta u equals to zero means which type of process students for a isothermal process change in internal energy is always equals to zero so can i say temperature will remain constant for an isothermal process isothermal process process delta u equals to zero why because delta u equals to n c v t2 minus t1 temperature is remaining constant so this one will reduce to zero so temperature will remain as it is if initial temperature is 300 and if it's ex adiabatic expansion in vacuum final temperature will also be 300 only do we have any option 300 yes a is the right answer student i hope this particular question is also crystal clear to you all shall we move ahead let's move ahead delta s will be highest for the reaction student here basically we are given certain reaction and we need to tell in which case change in entropy is maximum student if nothing is given for any reaction for any reaction you simply do this delta s is directly proportional to delta ng you check change in the moles of gaseous products and reactants in which case you are getting maximum value of delta ng more is the change in this delta ng more will be the value of change in entropy student if i talk about delta ng in 
equation one the value of delta ng is minus one option a delta ng equals to zero minus half sorry it's minus half if i talk about option b delta ng one option c delta ng zero option d delta ng one plus one two minus one plus one zero in which case you are having maximum value of delta ng in case b so can i say delta s is going to be maximum in the decomposition of calcium carbonate because here delta ng is one delta ng is maximum in case b more is the change in delta ng or more is the value of delta ng higher will be the change in entropy for a given chemical reaction am i clear please do copy it students moving to the next question which we have on the screen and the question is when one mole of an ideal gas is compressed to half of its initial volume and simultaneously heated to twice its temperature the change in entropy is change in entropy is delta s and delta s of system it's always equals to ncv ln t2 by t1 plus nr ln v2 by v1 now what is n n equals to 1 cv cv what's t2 by t1 it's heated to twice its temperature so can you say the value of t2 upon t1 is 2 final temperature is twice that of initial temperature whereas final volume is half to that of initial volume now can we put the data yes let's put it we have delta s system equals to 1 into cv ln 2 plus 1 into r into ln of v2 by v1 and v2 by v1 is 1 by 2 so it's cv ln 2 minus r ln 2 ln 2 i can take common it's cv minus r this is change in entropy for this system right i hope you understood this particular question also if we look at the option it's cv minus r ln 2 d is the correct answer next one students moving to the next question which we have on the screen and the question says one mole of an ice is converted into water at 273 kelvin and one atmosphere okay the entropies of h2o s and h2o l are 38 and 58 joules per kelvin mole respectively the enthalpy change for this conversion is let's first of all write the reaction shall i write it okay h2s h2o solid h2o liquid what is the temperature 273 kelvin so can i say at this temperature and this particular pressure one atmosphere pressure and zero degree centigrade h2o solid will be in equilibrium with h2o liquid now at equilibrium we have studied delta g of reaction is always equals to zero right okay they have given the entropies entropy for this is how much 38 and this for this one is to a liquid is 58 so what is delta s for this reaction it's how much 20 joule per kelvin mole right student now we have one very important equation delta g equals to delta h minus t delta s right delta g equals to zero so can i say delta h is equals to t into delta s what is t 273 what is delta s delta is how much 20 into 20 so how much 
इट्स टू पॉइंट सेवन थ्री और सो इट्स फाइव पॉइंट फोर सिक्स इन टू टेन रेस टू दावर थ्री क्लोजूल पर मोल सॉरी जूल्स पर मोल राइट और इन टर्म्स ऑफ किलो जूल्स आई कैन सिंपली राइट फाइव पॉइंट फोर सिक्स किलो जूल पर मोल so that's all for today's students i hope you thoroughly enjoyed this lecture i thank you all for watching the lecture students now let me tell you one more thing this particular chapter thermodynamics and thermochemistry demands lot of practice so before writing final jw mains paper or neat paper i request you all to solve at least 80 to 100 question from modules or books whatever you have solve a minimum of 80 to 100 question once again i thank you all for watching the lecture